Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And today we're going to be rewiring a pair of these uh, vintage 50s floor lamps. I believe these are from the late 50s, early 60s. They were originally brass plated. They've been painted several times. There's a uh, black here and then there's yellow underneath it. And I think there's a white coat in there somewhere too, possibly. Now lights are always a combination of fashion and utility. In this case, they're taking this fashion right here for this swing arm, which only moves it four inches, maybe, from one spot to another. So for helping get more light on what you're doing, reading or working or whatever, it really doesn't do much. What it's doing is it's imitating some very old lamps that go back to the rail wall, the kerosene lamp days, where you could swing a fairly dim light a little closer to your desktop wherever you are working. But uh, it's kind of a neat little feature there. And so it gets reproduced in modern lights where it has absolutely no purpose whatsoever. What it does do is complicate our job today because we've got to get this wire fed all the way up through three 90 degree bends to get it into the socket to get it wired. Now these have been rewired in the past, uh, maybe more than once. This is certainly not an original plug. I doubt this would have come with white wire. Brown wire was pretty much the standard back in the 50s. And uh, on top of that, it has a regular lamp socket shell in here and not the uh, key hickey socket, which uh, one would expect to see on this kind of uh, lamp. Now, using a regular table lamp socket, something like this, it works, and uh, it's not too difficult to put in, but it does make a problem when you've got to uh, take it apart. Here I am having to pull this wire up into the fixture so I can get enough slack to get the, to cut the wire at the socket. Be back in a minute. Here's how it works. You pull enough wire to the middle to create this loop so that you can move the loop up to the front. And I'm using the Phillips screwdriver here because it's got a round body flat blade screwdriver square. And you just pull it and pull it and pull it. Try not to lose that loop because pulling that up out of there is kind of a pain until finally you can get your socket out. In this case, I'm just going to cut it off. Be done with the stupid thing. And the customer has told me that they intend to repaint it, so all this paint that I'm chipping off while working on it is not going to be an issue. see how good a housekeeper everybody is here. We take their lamp apart. The cord goes through a hole in the base cover. So the first thing I've got to do is replace the plastic grommet which went, went in here, which of course is long gone. screws in to protect the cord from being cut by the sharp edges. And 
And our replacement cord in this case is a SP1 black. When you're running stuff like this, always pay attention because it's so easy to forget to run it through this hole. You get the wire all the way up to the top and you realize you got to take it all back apart again. I'm going to use the old cord to fish the new cord through. There's a variety of ways to attach these pieces together. I'm not expecting a lot of tension on this, so I'm just going to use a piece of uh, what is usually called duct tape. It's nice and sticky and it's smooth. And it makes a good tight connection and I can get it off afterwards. floor lamp like this, you can hold both ends of it, and pull gently on one and push on the other. Uh, there's a piece of our uh, missing grommet, or cord bushing as it's called in the catalogs. If this was a regular floor lamp, you really need to have somebody help you do this. It's just a matter of touch. It's always possible for it to be a rusty spot or something and the cord can snag. And you start pulling on it and you just pull your thing, your connection loose. There we are. Back up to the top. Now at this point it's tempting to try to use the old cord to pull the new cord through the angle pipe. But uh, in my experience, I haven't found that that really saves any time. It's just a matter of fiddling with it, pushing and pulling, pulling and pushing and pulling until you get the thing through. Something I always do before trying to pull a wire like this is to use some kind of lubricant. When I say some kind, it's because it's always whatever I have handy. Sometimes there's a bottle of uh, beeswax furniture polish, which I'm all out of that right now. But when I'm using the paste wax, just put some at each corner here. Heat it up. And it will run down the pipe, get everything nice and slick. Now this part again is something you've just got to fiddle with until you get it through. I've wrapped a little bit of duct tape around the uh, wiring ends of the cord and just fish it through. Now, the bottom side of this bend has a cap on it that comes off. There would have been, I mean, well, this is the bottom side, this is the top side. There would have been one on the bottom as well, but it probably got lost the last time someone tried to uh, rewire this. And we come back again. Wax really makes a difference in this case. It's the insides of these pipes are sometimes quite rough. Belly. 
got that far without too much trouble. I've salvaged the nipple from the old socket. And the way we're going to put this back together is with a keyed hickey socket, which would have been the original equipment on this. And one thing to always be aware of when you're using something like this is that uh, the diameter of this base shell will determine how long your key needs to be. You'll find lots of lamps where this is imitating an old kerosene lamp and this piece will be much bigger and you know your key maybe oh inch long maybe. In any case longer keys are available and uh, you can also get little extensions. You found at any place like an old fashioned hardware store that sells lamp plugs. I try to use the blue thread lock, especially in situations like this where I'm going to have to turn this thing down to the right clock position, and it might not be the tightest it can go. There's always a problem with it coming apart or loose later. And uh, when you're depending on that, it's best to apply it and just let it sit 10-15 minutes. The uh, thread lock will set up and then you won't have to worry about screwing this nipple down into the uh, thread and possibly the cord possibly cutting it. Okay, screw this on the end of the pipe just to give myself a little more stable working surface. Push this piece down to where the wires are just barely pointing out. Because I've got to put this and the socket on here and I've got to make it get it lined up so that the key comes out in the slot. I apply some fresh thread sealer, put my shell down here, and I have a another nut that fits the pipe that goes on there. And I'll just have to sit there and fiddle with it until I get it threaded so that I can lock this shell down in the position I want it to be. Now I'll apply a little more of the thread lock to the hickey threads. And I have no idea why this is called a hickey. It's just in any kind of electrical work, a bracket which holds two pieces apart from each other is called a hickey. It may have been invented by Lorenzo J. Hickey for all I know. But I put the thread seater on there because when I tighten this down, what I've actually got to do is get the screw for the key lined up with the slot. And that may not be the tightest spot on there. This one's coming out kind of close. The hickey and the socket are connected by a little screw that's down inside the shell. And a small screwdriver unscrews it and it, they come apart. Now that's necessary in this case because you can't wire the socket when it's uh, down in this shell. So it's got to be pulled up like that. And uh, I'm not going to use a hundred writer's loop on this job, mainly because there's just no way that anybody is going to be able to trip over this piece and pull the wire out from the screws, which is what the purpose of the underwriter's loop is all about. But I do put the smooth side under the copper wire, as is our custom in North America. And the ridge side goes under the silver wire.
for fiddling, getting the screw back into the hickey. Then we reverse the process. thing back together again. Now ordinarily it's very very bad practice to put a lamp together by twisting it together while the wire is inside of it. It just simply puts the wire under a lot of stress and could possibly even break it. However in this case first off there's no other way to do it and second off we've got a large pipe so there's no chance of the wire binding the side of it and we've got three feet for the whole thing to twist over. So it really shouldn't be an issue. But uh, more blue Loctite on the threads. And I like to give it a couple of reverse spins so that actually I'm unwinding a twist. I'm going to put this back on. Making sure that the pipe and everything is well seated. Secret Underground Laboratory, thanking you for sticking around and watching this video. I would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Uh, tell all your friends, tell your family. Uh, let the videos run in the background. Some people tell me I have a soothing voice, so maybe that will help get you through the day. In any case, I do appreciate you watching, and uh, please tune in for the next video. Thank you very much.